Hey guys, how's it going? Ghostly Rich here with Mika here today, and uh, as you can see, she went to the store and picked up a flash cow, so that way we can finally fix our Jeep's tire sizes. Did you just lick the lens? Now you're going to look cute. You know it wasn't a good idea. Here we go. Let's open it up, see what's inside. So, if we push this out, wiggle it, squeeze this, and pour everything on the floor. So, we have our calibrator for tire size. Also allows, uh, so we can turn off our daytime running lights if we want and have our fog lights as the DRLs probably. I don't know, I'd have to take a look. And what else? Oh yes, and then we can also, um, like I said, uh, adjust for if you've changed your axles. You can change your gear ratios. And you can also do a couple other fun things as well as use it as a bit of a diagnostic tool as well as have it so it saves readouts. Now I'm not looking to do a whole bunch of readout things with this. I just want it so that way I can turn off the TPS beep for when I'm driving, especially since I drive um, half the year with my tires aired down a bit. So that way I have more grip on the road. And of course, it saves you from all the annoying dings every time you do something with your vehicle. Also allows you to do idle downs. So you can plug this in and then idle down your Jeep for when you're winching. So, either way, as you can see, first thing we gotta do, take this, take the USB cord which Fluffy Butt is sitting on right there. Thank you. And plug it into your computer after you plug it into your computer so you can access the interwebs. As you can see, I wanted to show you some of the options here. I originally had one of these in-cabin monitor twos, uh, or the Trail Dash 2. Now, the problem with it was I had to send my PCM in, and I couldn't do that. I use my Jeep way too often, so my friend was able to sell it to somebody else, because he had it, and I just, vouched for getting this one locally in Canada here. Um, I wish I could say I paid that price in Canadian, but that definitely did not happen. So now that I have it, I need to update it. So you would go to superchips.com. After you go there, you click on the updates tab right here. After we click that, make sure you get agent number one. It's going to download right here after it downloads click and open I agree to everything yes I agree set up in progress initializing so it's gonna do all this after it finishes doing this it's gonna do this if you want to change the location where it downloads go ahead and press browse and do so I'm just gonna leave it on the C drive install Next, would you like to install this device software? Install now. Finish. Finish. Next thing to do is it wants to install the driver. Okay, let's do this again. Next. Finish. Finish. Okay. Agent is now updated. Perfect. Close. Close, close my lighting. Plug in your device. Plug it in, it should turn on. If it doesn't turn on, probably means you have a battery issue or a USB issue. Make sure that you try a different USB port. After that lights up, you go over here, you click update agent. After we click that, the first time it's gonna go through, it's gonna find it. If it doesn't find it, you have bigger issues, but once it finds it, um, now you're just gonna put in your information right here for registration purposes. After that, it'll do a whole bunch of scanning. It'll let you know. Has an, right here, an upgraded product warranty. Oh wow, it also allows you to get the flash pack uh, upgrade if you want. Now this is the one where I believe you have to send in your PCM, or as you can see right here, if your JK is below 2014, 
you don't have to send in your PCM. If it's after 2014, just like mine is, mine's from 2015, then I have to come down over here, which is 349, because you have to send in your PCM. Really sucks. And then of course, right here is for your JL. And then for right here, again, JL. So, I'm not going to do any of these because, well, there's no point for me to add any of this to cart. It says, your device is now up to date. Optional downloads available for your device. For me, I'm not going to get any of these optional downloads because I don't want to send in the PCM. Now that we've done that and we've completed our updates, we can just close this and disconnect it and bring it out to our Jeep. Really cool photo, see how close I can get with it still focusing? Probably right there, okay. Um, right there is your OBD2 reader, and then right up there is the gateway module. So if you have a JL, you're gonna have to get the gateway module bypass. Something very important for if you are trying to use this with a JL, and if you're trying to connect and all of a sudden it's like, why is it not reading? Probably because you need this bypass. I think it goes for 50 bucks American. So if you're shopping for this, make sure you get that gateway module. And again, it's super easy. It's just literally like, it looks like a double-ended relay. And all you do is you disconnect it from the gateway module and plug it into this bypass and you're good. First thing you're gonna wanna do is pop it open. Go down here, there's our OB2. OB1 Kenobi, plug it in here. OBD2 is plugged in. It's loaded up to this. Now that it's loaded up to this, we're gonna put our key in. Turn it to on without actually turning on the stereo. And then press OK. Communicating, loading your vehicle and application. My lights flickered because all my amps kicked in. <laughs> it's establishing the communication with the vehicle. All right, perfect. And now we have some options. Running options, vehicle settings, service options. Let's go to vehicle settings, tire size. Let's move this up to right there. I just put it to 35 because that's what I'm rocking. Vehicle just responded, letting me know that it flashed. That's what all that blinking noises was. Turn off the ignition. Once it's off and the vehicle's making the annoying digging noises, okay. Give it one sec. Sorry about the annoying beeping. I'll fire this back up once that finishes. After that, it'll tell you to turn the engine back on without starting, which is what's done now. Press OK. Tire size modified. Next, you can go to your gear ratio, transfer case low, TPMS, which is that light see that yellow light right there that's for my tire sensors now if you want to you can click this and press disable warning if you're turning it off it says for off-road use only i'll show you what it does press ok right there just went out took a couple seconds but see that yellow lights now out perfect all right, we'll put this back on. There, and then once it's enabled, 
you'll watch it and it'll come back on in a second. There you go. Fog light drop out. Oh. This is another thing you can look into if you'd like to do this. DRL location. See how it says high beams, low beams, turn signals, and fog lights. For me, I like to hit fog lights if you're going to wire, let's say you got some JL speakers or whatnot with the fog light, uh, or not the fog light, the halos around it. So what you would do is you'd set that to fog light and you'd wire your halo into the fog light and then boom, all of a sudden you've got really cool. Um, all, every time you hit that, it'll turn on your fog lights if you have fog lights in the bumper, but it'll also run your halos. If you just want the other, then you can play around with this or if you want to you can just say no running light at all and then just give them constant power but I wouldn't do that personally if it were me I would run it to my fog lights and that way it just runs right to there and then you would just wire them to your fog lights or you can do low beams whatever you want to do you could do your turn signals and then but the thing is that can mess with it especially if they're LED because of the fact that uh, runs at a different wattage right and then you have to get the LED adapters I'm just drawing a blank the diode so that way it slows it down otherwise it might start making them flicker really quickly all right we're gonna leave that for now horn chirp this is for you know when you come home at night uh, and if you have uh, one of those fancy dancy key fobs, it allows you so you can uh, turn off that horn chirp when you lock. So that way it'll just lock without the horn and does not wake everyone up in the house. You can also turn off the lamp flash when you lock or turn it on. One touch lane change. This is already enabled for me. Good. You can disable this. I don't know why anyone would disable that. It's nice to be able to just click it and it flashes three times as you switch lanes. Oh, and you can set the threshold. Oh, well, that's awesome. So you can set what minimum PSI you want. For me, I usually air the Jeep down to 20. So I think, oh, the lowest you can go is 22. So you can actually raise it or you can lower it to 22. I'll leave that up to you. There we go. Updated. I don't know if my light's going to go out. I think it was already at 22, so I can't see that light going out. As you can see, I have one tire that's a little lower than the rest right now, so that's why. Um, Let's see here. Accessory delay on engine off oh so this is let's say i turn this off and you know how sometimes when you turn off your vehicle uh everything in the vehicle keeps running for a certain amount of time you can either turn that completely off or you can actually crank that right up if you want so you can make it longer so see how it says 45 seconds you can make it five minutes so your stereo keeps playing for five minutes after the vehicle's turned off great for i guess if you have a kid in the car and i'm not talking a young and i'm talking like a 12 or 13 year old who just wants to jam out while you're quickly grabbing something from the gas station lamp delay and engine off this makes it so if you have a neighbor in front of you like i do that uh, it doesn't flash your highlights in their window for a designated amount of time after you turn the vehicle off. You can leave that if you want. And like I said, if you've done any different gear ratios with your vehicle, go ahead and change that to adapt it to the new gear ratio that you've adapted to. Uh, mine's still stock, so I'm not going to mess with that. And I'm not going to change my low gear ratio or anything. The rest of this is actually good. I'm not going to change anything. Anyways, I hoped this gave you some really cool info and so look at this it happens a scan code tool right here so that way you can scan to see if um, you have any engine codes which is very very cool too so go ahead and play around with it you just press ok you can read read DTS it's reading right now it's not going to see anything oh lost calm with radio nice look at this Right low beam control circuit high. Lost calm with radio. 
left high beam control circuit high. So, as you can see, I even have a few that are just stored in here. And then when I'm done, I can say clear. And now it's going to clear them. Couple last minute things. Service options. You can reset that if you want to. Vehicle settings. We've already done this. Running options. Engine idle. Okay. So you can actually set the idle up and down. Apparently this is a lot for when you're winching. Uh, if you're not doing too much with the winch, you don't have to worry. And if you don't know what you're doing, don't mess with it. See this? You can totally mess with it and fun stuff. Now you might be quickly wondering what the heck's the service options for. You'd want to click this for if you're going into uh, get your vehicle serviced. You want to make sure you re reset it because if you go into a Jeep dealership and you've flashed your vehicle with anything, they can refuse service. Or if you have a warranty, you no longer have a warranty. Put it that way. And that's only if they want to be mean about it, but a lot of them will because they can. Something to really pay attention to.